Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is a very special review. This is probably the most unique fragrance I've ever reviewed in terms of its limited availability and the sheer craziness of what's inside. <laughs> this is Last of the Agar by Rasse Forts from Fort and Manley. Uh, he is one of my favorite perfumers. I own a few from Fort and Manley and yeah, I met him in Italy in Essence. We shared pizza together. I consider him a friend. We chat now and again on, on WhatsApp and yeah, he's, he's a very cool, very humble man. Rasse reached out to me and asked if I would like to have a smell of this and I said yes please, that sounds great. If you want to send me a little sample that would be awesome and I'll review it and uh, yeah. And then he wrote back saying he would love to send me a free bottle and we are friends, I consider him a friend and I, I wasn't happy about having a bottle because of the price of this uh, but he was he was persistent, he really wanted me to have a bottle and I said, okay, I, I will accept on the condition that I give you a full bottle of Chambeau, my Centauri perfume Chambeau. I did have one full private bottle of my own kind of stock for myself. And I said, look, I, okay, we'll, we'll do a swap. If you want to send me this, I, I have to send you a Chambeau. And so he accepted. And uh, yeah, so now Rasse owns a Centauri Chambeau and I own a Last of the Agar. So to be clear of everyone, this was sent to me, but you know that Rasse is one of my favorite perfumers. You know I love Oud. It's very unlikely that I wouldn't not like this. Before we dive into how it smells, I'll let you know just how insanity filled this perfume is. <laughs> it is crazy. It's got 85 different Oud oils in there, the majority of which are aged wild Oud from high-end artisanal distillers. I'll read you uh, the, the little, this is the little card that comes inside the box. Congratulations, you have attained one of the last of the Agar perfumes. Your bottle number is 120 out of only 173 in existence. This Tola bottle of perfume contains 85 different oud oils sourced from various regions. They have been meticulously distilled by artisan distillers using some of the finest sinking grade agarwood chips on earth. Unfortunately, some of these trees used to distill these exquisite materials no longer exist. I'll read you a little bit of what is in here, but I can't pronounce half the names. <laughs> the composition contains some ouds from Ensar Oud, Agar Aura, uh, Yuzhi Oud and Al Sharif Oud. Uh, I might be pronouncing names incorrectly, I do apologize. Few of the Oud oils in here are Tiger Oud Royale 1990, Oud Royale 2.0, Borneo 2000, Borneo 3000, these are all from Ensar Oud by the way, Aroa Kush, Peoples Salini, Oud Yusuf, White Kinam, Irain Arang, Oud Royale 2004, Kinam Rouge, uh, I've actually smelled Kinam Rouge when I met Ensar uh, in person and Kinam Rouge was amazing and it's also incredibly expensive. <laughs> I remember seeing the price and was quite like, wow. Uh, so, I mean, that's the level of ouds that are in here. I mean, you can see the expense of it. Uh, Shri Sarini, Purple Sumatora, Tigerwood Royale 2001, Wang Liao Kai Ki, Assam Black, Peony Limited, Aroa Kayaku, Port Jaya, Sultan Mehmet, uh, Hanane 2005, Port Archie, Oud, Turgul, Borneo 50k, Gulam number no. 1. Apologies if I can't pronounce half of these names correctly, but you can see the level of Oud oils that went into the composition there. The highest end Oud that you can buy, essentially. And like I say, most of them are aged wild oud. You, those oils you can't find anymore. They don't really exist, uh, apart from like private collectors hoarding stashes of them. They're you know they're, they're gone. So treasure house of insane level quality oud oil that you're pretty unlikely to find that amount. Well, I don't think anyone has ever put 85 different ouds of that caliber in a perfume before ever. So it's completely unique that way. And when you smell it, when you first apply this, it is incredibly smooth. 
I do not get any kind of funk, any kind of barnyard at all. It's extremely beautiful, it's, it's very pretty oud. Like I say, I mean, I don't even get the, the lightest twinge of even a goat's hair kind of vibe. It's mellow, it's smooth, it's sweet. I get kind of Thai Cambodian kind of profiles coming through. It's an oud centric fragrance to the point of, uh, <laughs> well, to the point of I really don't smell much else but oud. The whole thing is oud scented. As it dries down, I pick up on a light musky ambergris paired with the oud. So I wrote to Rasse and asked, oh, is there ambergris in this? I get something kind of musky, ambergris-like. He wrote back saying, yes, there is a little bit of ambergris, there's a little bit of musk, and there's a little bit of sandalwood. When I smell it, I mean, this is hugely oud scented. Those materials, I think, are very, very lightly uh, infused into the fragrance. The musky kind of quality of the ambergris, you pick out for sure. It just makes it kind of ethereal and, and musty as it dries down. You get so many different facets within the oud. When you first apply it, it's sweet, it's smooth, it's, like I say, it's going to remind you of Thai, Cambodian kind of oud profiles. Very, very pretty. They have slight fruity nuances, slight floral nuances. When I was writing my notes, I wrote uh, basically reminds me of delicate petals, like the nuances within the oud. I get a very light petal floral like nuance, the slight sweet, fruity, honeyed kind of nuances. So it's, it has this beautiful envelope of honeyed, petal like, delicate is a nice word to use opening of just a magnificent oud. I mean, if you love oud, there's no way that you won't like this. Basically, it's, it's for an oud lover, it's, it's easy to, to like. This is the most pleasant oud composition that I've smelled. It's very, very likable, very, very uh, appealing, easy to wear, enjoyable, soothing. As it kind of dries down after kind of 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, I notice slight kind of almost spiced nuances coming. There must be some ouds in here that have more of a slightly peppered quality. And that's a, a word that I wrote down was that a slight peppered, uh, warming, peppered, spiced like quality, uh, obviously coming from one, one or multiple. I mean, multiple of the ouds is 85 in here. So some of the nuances that I do get as this dries down, are peppered, slightly spiced, uh, honeyed, sweet. Uh, sometimes I got picked up kind of a slightly earthy petrichor kind of vibe, which is um, a, a, a nuance that you get in certain oud oils. And some of my favorite oud oils are that kind of petrichor, earthy, dried earth kind of smell. You get nuances of all these kind of profiles in here when you start smelling feel these different nuances come out. Like I say, in the opening, a little bit more like petal, delicate, sweet, honeyed, fruity, um, very, very uh, perfumed in a way. These top notes of the oud are almost fresh and bright and clean and, and, and sweet and honeyed and floral-like. Uh, the top notes of these ouds uh, are fantastic. I mean, it's very, very, very pretty, very beautiful. Another aspect to the fragrance as it dries down is a slight kind of incense like uh, vibe. And these are all common profiles within different oud oils and they're all, basically, there's 85 of them, they're all blending together. You're getting little bits of hints of all of them all at once. And so it's it's complex and simple at the same time, in, the, in a sense. <laughs> they're all kind of merging into each other and you can kind of as it develops and as you're walking around, you'll pick up slightly different nuances. On my skin, it takes around three to four hours to dry down, in which time uh, the ambergris gives it this kind of slightly sweetened, ethereal, musky quality that's very clean. Uh, again, there's no funk top to bottom on this. It's extremely clean, very likable. But the ambergris gives it this ethereal um, bubble. In terms of uh, performance for this one, 
I, I found the projection in Siage to be more intimate in my space, but I was quite surprised because this is obviously a heavily, heavily natural that um, even three to four hours later, the way that I wore this was basically pouring a little bit on my hand, rubbing it like that, and then doing this on my neck. From that little swipe on my neck, I was able to smell this three to four hours after application around myself in a bubble, like I was sort of subtly cocooned. Very, very comforting. It's it's meditative, it's zen, it's, it's very beautiful. I mean, if you like oud, I don't think you can go wrong with it, to be honest. I think any oud lover is going to really enjoy it. In terms of overall longevity, around eight hours on my skin before it's mellowing out into a skin scent and disappearing. Eight hours longevity, three to four hours of a, of a soft kind of intimate uh, bubble around you where you can perceive it and you'll get wafts of it within those kind of first four hours or so before it sits closer to the skin. Obviously applying it to your wrist or your hand, you can smell it throughout the day for the whole eight hours and enjoy it. Um, but Rasse's pulled something off that I don't think will be repeated uh, in, in a hurry because of the expense of doing that is is insane for a for start. <laughs> um, but also I think to be genuinely perfectly honest, I, I can't see many, many perfumers, even the Oud distillers like Ensar and Russian Adam and Bortnikov using that percentage of oud in a perfume uh, like this is like oud 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 from top middle to base like with very very like almost nothing else uh, <laughs> like like I say you get nuances of of the of the ambergris and it is massively it's an oud perfume it's like an oud bomb if you like oud you're not gonna get a more oody fragrance than this. Uh, it's, it, it is nuts. Rasse did uh, ask me to mention about the puffer spray. So this is the puffer that screws onto the bottle if you want to use the puffer, or you can use the bottle as a splash. So you can unscrew uh, the little 12 mil bottle like this. You can use that as a splash if you like, or you can put the puffer in and screw it down. Now it's recommended that I'm terrified of dropping this, so I'm just gonna put that back. <laughs> it's recommended not to leave that puffer in. Um, when you've finished using the puffer, unscrew it again. Uh, you'll have a little bit of perfume left in the in the tube, just to empty it out, and then put that back. And instead of keeping it on display with the puffer, keep it tight with with the original lid on because if you leave it permanently with the puffer, it actually does let a little bit of air in through the puffer part of it, uh, and the alcohol could evaporate, and you'll be left with just the oil, and, and the alcohol will disappear, and it'll look like you've lost your perfume. Uh, when you've finished with the puffer, empty it out, and then store it away again. For me personally, I find it very easy just to unscrew that and kind of do this, like that, and then you can do that. That's how I wore it and it was perfect. For demonstration purposes, I've not used this puffer yet, but I will use it for you uh, to show you how it works and uh, how I would suggest uh, removing it afterwards. Very, very simple. Unscrew the lid. Put your puffer in. It is a screw fit puffer. Um, so it just very neatly screws in there. There you go, and then obviously the little nozzle at the front, and then I would do maybe two or three sprays from this, and then unscrew it. You'll have some perfume that will be held in the tube, you can finish that off like that, you'll get three or four more sprays from it. You can store that now, it's empty, and then put your lid back down. That way you can make use of the puffer, you can spray it on, and then obviously unscrew, spray what's left, and then you can put that back in the box and it will it will keep. Obviously with a perfume this rare and this expensive, take good care of it, don't leave it in the sunshine, don't leave it in the bathroom, 
look after it because it's it is like gold <laughs> but yeah for any serious like oud addict oud collector that would be one that will excite you just knowing what is in it basically and the fact that it is so heavily oud focused the pricing uh, reflects the fact that it's got these insane quality wild aged oud oils that you can't buy anymore so when you go to buy it Directly from Rasse Fort's website, uh, his pricing is actually listed in Australian dollars, just as a reference. It is 640 Australian dollars. On the current exchange rate in USD, that's about $470 US dollar. And in pounds sterling, it's around £345. It's a 12 mil. Price obviously isn't for everybody. I, I know some of the oud oils that go into this and I know what they cost or what they did cost when you could buy them, you can't buy them anymore. And they are nuts, they're, they're the highest, they're the highest kind of caliber oud that you can buy. And they're very, very expensive. Rasse was super kind and offered a 10% discount on this. And all you have to do is type in Peter 10 at the checkout and you'll get 10% off a full bottle. Uh, you, won't, you, you won't get a discount on this fragrance anywhere else, uh, so, make use of it if you want to get a bottle. Thank you Rasse for that. So I'm going to do a giveaway because this was sent to me for free. Um, I would like to give back to you even though that I, I traded it and swapped it for a Chambeau. The value of this is more than the value of Chambeau obviously and so I'm going to give away maybe you know five mil of this which is uh, quite a lot. <laughs> if you are keen to to smell rare oud oil or you're tempted to buy it. If you're tempted to buy a bottle but you're scared maybe to blind buy. But if you're seriously interested in purchasing a bottle or you just really love oud, then leave me a comment. I will pick about five people and I will decant personally one mil from here into a vial, into a spray vial, and I'll do that five times so you'll get uh, so five people will get one mil each decanted from this as as an extension of generosity from Rasse Fort to me. I will extend that back out to you. And so five people will get to enjoy a sample of this and see how, you know, the world's best oud oil smells in a composition with almost nothing else in it. I mean, it's it's massively, oud. it's an oud bomb. I will pick five of you, so what I'll do is I'll reply to your comment and say, yes, you've won. If you read that comment, and it's up to you to check the replies in the comments, I can't, there's no way for me to actually message you. If you don't check, come back and check your comments, you might miss it. So come back in like a couple of days or a week and just check your comments so you don't miss out. And then basically email me and I will post at you. This, the, the giveaway will have to be in the UK only. As a rule for the giveaway, I would kindly ask, and this has nothing to do with Rasse, he doesn't even know I'm gonna do a giveaway, but I would like you to uh, either follow them on Instagram or Facebook, or even if you just check out their website below, do one of those things. If you can follow them on Instagram, Fort and Manley, if you can follow them on Facebook, for a manly, or if you can just check out their website and have a look what they do. That's the only rule for entering, uh, and that's it. Uh, good luck to everyone uh, for getting a sample, and I'll see you soon uh, with another video. I will definitely be enjoying um, the rest of what is left after I've given half of it away. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll be enjoying it. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.